All right, everybody, really excited to take a look at Jalen Rieger here, specifically for the landing place, the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, there was definitely some questions in the first round as to how the Eagles were going to address the wide receiver position uh, throughout the course of the draft, and even in the undrafted free agency. You can definitely see not only do they prioritize the position, they prioritize a lot of speed at the position. But at the 21st overall selection, uh, they took uh, Texas Christian University TCU wide receiver Jalen Rieger. And the, the Philadelphia Eagles fans aren't, aren't happy about that. Um, I think part of it's because C.D. Lamb went to division rival Dallas Cowboys. Uh, a few picks earlier, there was obviously some hope in Eagles Nation that – uh, Howie Rosen was going to trade up and acquire C.D. Lamb. That didn't end up happening. And then publicly, a lot of people had separated LSU wide receiver Justin Jefferson, who ultimately went 22nd to pick afterwards to Minnesota, had separated him out as clearly with the top uh, four and then having a divide down to Jalen Rieger. And in doing some question and answer with executives on the NFL, that doesn't seem to be how the league viewed it. Rager was definitely up there and above Jefferson on many boards. One of the things I'd like to point out is just that in the West Coast offense, uh, which is the philosophical background of Doug Peterson, it, the offense is driven by the outside lane receivers. And the slot are manned by tight ends. And the Eagles have two really good tight ends. They're going to do a lot more, it sounds like, with 12 personnel, just kind of listening to the press conferences throughout the season. So really, this, this outside lane is what they needed. And Jefferson, on, according to everybody, uh, was more of a slot projection. So what we're going to have down here, Rieger is going to be in this bottom right number one position here. Uh, that's just where he aligned for them. So we're going to get a chance to see him as an outside lane receiver, which is exactly what the Eagles were looking for uh, and, and exactly what they're looking to build on is speed in that outside lane. They have Alshon Jeffrey. They have Deshaun Jackson. But neither of those players have been able to remain healthy. All right, and they're constantly in Philadelphia trying to find people that can be healthy in that outside lane. So let's take a look at what Rieger can bring to this offense and the first thing that stands out to me is just the, the explosive profile. So you're talking about a player that ran a 4.47. Um, you know, he has time speeds that are less than that. That just happens to be what he ran at the combine. He was 97 percentile in terms of the vertical with 42 inches. He was 98 percentile in terms of the broad jump with 138 inches. So this is an explosive linear athlete, and we'll get a chance to explore a lot about uh, what makes him special here. So again, bottom right, he has press, I'm sorry, his off, uh, not in press, and he has a cushion defender here with inside leverage. And so we're just going to see him tempo this thing because he's creating some opportunity for him to work after the catch. And here's where it gets special. It's not this. This part isn't particularly special, right? You, some You're going to see Philadelphia press him to be way more explosive coming into this, not to just roll into this. So you're going to see that get cleaned up uh, with Doug Peterson and Aaron Moorhead right away. But right here is where it gets to be special. So he plucks that away from his body, up above his eyes, and then, boom, makes that first man miss, and we're off. And that's the kind of stuff that, again, that we, the West Coast offense, as much as it's driven by the outside, it's definitely driven by run after the catch. And so Rieger's going to have to continue to provide these plays because they're going to put the ball in his hands with opportunities to make a player miss. And, again, we're going to see it come in right here on the left side of our screen. He's put that foot in the ground. You can see this incredible body lean that he gets as he explodes out of that, gathers himself, and then ends up taking it up the field. So that run after the catch is going to be critical in order for him to be effective here in something that they bring up. So, again, he's going to be in this bottom right position, number one, into the boundary in this particular case. Again, he's getting played off with an inside leverage here. And this is against a different team. So it's something similar that you're seeing across the Big 12 in terms of how they're playing them. A lot more of that 40 shell uh, quarters and they'll roll into some two stuff and three stuff, obviously, but playing him again with big cushion, which is something that's difficult when you have this kind of speed because he can get on top and eat that up. And you can see this corner here. All right. He's trying to keep his eyes inside. He's trying to keep leverage. He is responsible for thing over the top. And Rieger is able to do a really good job about selling this over the top. He even stems it in just a little bit and then settles down. He's going to have to clean this up. He can't round him like that. All right, he's going to have to clean that piece up about how he gets in there, that little bit where he takes it in. Boom. Let me slow it down. So right here, you're going to see him start to take it inside before he takes that back around. And that's the piece he's going to have to clean up 
is there. He's not going around those like that, but we do like to see him fight back to the ball like that. All right. So he understands this coverage here, he understands what he's getting and what the underneath dropper is doing. So this is a big window here, and he's not going to take any chances. He's going to work right back into that thing. Uh, and this is going to be something that the Philadelphia Eagle fans are not going to want to see here because we have a drop. And this is something with Nelson Aguilar that became the butt of a lot of jokes. Uh, so, again, something that he's going to have to continue to work on as he moves forward. And so this is why not everybody had him universally in that category was there are some areas of his game he's going to have to improve upon, but you're going to be able to see the dynamic qualities and, again, how that fits to the Philadelphia Eagles offense. So if he makes those strides, uh, it can be important. What's going to be difficult is in this particular year, you're talking about not having the same offseason program. Uh, we don't know what kind of camp stuff we're going to have or what's going to be available to them. So it's going to be very incumbent on on the Eagles, uh, Coach Aaron Moorhead and that staff to find ways uh, to be creative in terms of his development so that he can be that kind of player for them moving forward. So same alignment down here at the bottom, seeing defensive alignment, seeing a ton of inside leverage. Again, good vertical stem, and he's got him now. All right, he's got him. And this is this is what happens when you can package together that speed with the ability to get in and out here. So he settles down. He gets that DB to commit. He's probably going to give a little more head and shoulder uh, against NFL DBs on the finger to bite just on body position because he doesn't actually turn his head back to the ball. He's into a little bit more of that. Boom. But he gets on top of that. Again, if this ball had actually not been uh, brought to them to the sideline, if it had been thrown the numbers, uh, this thing would have been a touchdown. But uh, we'll see from the back copy here what it looks like in terms of catching the ball. But this is the kind of stuff that when you bring that kind of explosive element, gets even better. And when he, when he really gets into the accelerator early, which he's capable of doing, just didn't do consistently, when he really gets in that accelerator early in that first five to seven yards, this is going to get even more dynamic even at the NFL level uh, because he is that explosive. And the testing was able to verify what you saw in the film from him there. All right, so again, we're going to have the same – Situation for him down below, but we're going to have a little different uh, alignment here. Finally see a DB actually playing him within those first five yards. So this is more of a head-up alignment, so we get to see how he releases from here. All right. So he has a plan. He knows what he wants to do. He gives him a little bit of the leg here, and he's trying to get him to bite. What he needs to understand is where he ultimately wants to go and how he wants to get into this. So he gave him an outside move, which brought him into where he wanted to release to. All right, and again, he is a he is an explosive athlete. So when he gets his foot in the ground, he's able to get on top of him and create that separation over. over. Um, but he's going to have to, again, clean up some of his release plan here and give himself an opportunity to get where he wants to go a little faster and get him manipulate that DB even better. But these are the kind of plays when you can make them down the field. I know it's all the one drop uh, coming back to the ball, but we've seen a couple times now, especially for a guy that's going to be uh, throwing in the vertical part of the field, we've had – no issues with this pluck and adjust down here away from himself. Look, he gets up. He's got to completely turn his body. He's inside facing. He's got to get off his right foot, elevate incredibly. Again, there's that vertical jump. Now he's up there, hands away from his body. He's in a pluck, continue to turn a uh, heck of a job there. So we don't have any issues that we're seeing here in terms of catching the ball down the field, which is, again, going to be uh, really important for an explosive receiver. So same alignment, DB's playing with cushion. We're going to get out of there, get inside leverage. And so this gets to be hard with these DBs that are playing like that, all right, with this stop start. Gives them the same one, but this DB's not buying it. A little, little, different, uh, little different coaching for how they're playing it here. He's expecting this thing, all right? He knows he's going to have to stay inside. He knows he's going to have to rally to those things. But here's where it gets special again, all right? So they, they've seen in the film study, boom, that stutter and go. But now they're adding this other element to it because, again, he can sink. He can sink and get back to the ball. He has that ability. Again, we talked about where he needs to work on the rounding of the routes. But that's not an issue from him. Now, again, this thing being undercuts a hell of a defensive play. But that doesn't diminish Rieger's, uh, what he did to get this thing and fight back for the ball. All right. So that this is great work here. Again, so sells that double move. Boom. Gets him upfield. Breaks it off underneath him. Fights back for the ball. And then, obviously – just needed it to be there for him, and it wasn't heck of a play there uh, by the Baylor defender. Really special, <laughs> really. right down number one, right down number one for uh, for a study list there for sure. All right, so he's soloed up by himself down here. We're going to see again different alignment. DB showing more of a press now, getting up towards a true press. Now he's starting to creep to that bail. 
All right, so Rieger's got to read this the whole time, right? He's got to read that this guy's bailing off, that he's taking that outside leverage. We got the spin to the middle. All right, so chances are we're in a, in a cover three variant here. They bring five, so it looks like some kind of three under, three deep. But this, again, he knows how to attack a blind spot, all right? So you have a DB that's wanting to maintain outside leverage. He's starting down here below the numbers. He knows he has the help. So what he's looking to do is funnel if anything inside of the help and not get beat outside. Rager understands how to get to that blind spot. He's getting to that back hip. And by doing that, that's what really gets him to get across face and stay skinny because he can't take this thing into the middle. He can't just break this flat because he's going to bring himself into conflict here. He needs to keep this on a flat line. Well, if you keep this on a flat line with a DB that's in phase and sees the whole thing, they'll just take over. And actually, shoot, a lot of them will undercut it in this scenario because they have an overlap player. So he needs to manipulate this guy so that he can stay skinny inside and create that window. And he does a heck of a job there on it. I, um, so let's see what this ball placement looks like from the end copy. I mean, you got to dig it off the dirt. You you want him to catch that? I'm not. We're never gonna we're never gonna look at a receiver and say, "Hey, don't don't catch the ball," or we don't expect you to catch a ball. Uh, it will say it's difficult trying to catch it off your toes like that as it's fading down. Not a not a lot of zip from this quarterback here. That's one that Carson Wentz gonna have no problem putting that on the lower part of his hip and letting him secure that ball. So now we are to the trip side here again. Same alignment. Not, one of the nice things about when they do a line like this it makes it a lot easier to follow along. All right, so again, here's a, a really good understanding of coverage. He's going to take this inside release. He's feeling where that safety is. He's feeling the DBs creeping up ahead of him. And so he's going to sink and work in that window. Again, it gets deflected before he gets there. But this is a player that shows, again, that some of the nuance of the route running, shows coverage awareness, shows the ability to track and catch a deep ball. So there's definitely some things to get excited about. And then obviously we talked about before, there's going to be areas where that coaching staff is going to have to continue to work with him on how to improve. So up top here, off and inside, there we go again. Great job of understanding how to get the guy to commit. Look at him get that, that Texas Tech defender to fully run up field, fully commit. This guy is out of here. He thinks this thing is vertical. And once he did that, now he breaks underneath him. All right, gets him right into that blind spot. Now he's underneath him. It is a vertical route. It is a foot race. Now this one on the upfield shoulder, Good ball placement, right? That's where the quarterback has to do his work. This ball placement's way better than the last one off the shoestrings and creates an opportunity for the explosive play. A great job getting in the blind spot. The pure speed, the explosiveness, and the vertical areas show up. Again, track and catch the deep ball, not a problem here. Again, a lot of things that you, this team clearly believes that they can continue to work with and refine that are going to be impactful to them moving forward. So again, down below... Off and inside. Sells that vertical. This is way cleaner. We saw the one where he rounded it. I made, I made a big talking point about where he rounded that one. This one's way cleaner. About boom, boom, turn, fight back a little bit. All right. And part of this is just that relationship with the quarterback and where that quarterback's going to want you. So, again, this is the problem about not having the offseason for these players is where do they want you? Where's that ball going to be? In this case, it looks like he's trying to figure out where it's going to be. Fights back. Again, pluck away from his body consistently. Look at him. Out away from his body doing that. The jump may have been a little bit unnecessary, which did keep him from turning as quickly. But those defenders were there. Not a lot of run after the catch when you're bracketed like that. Let's see what the end copy looks like in terms of the catch. We can see it pluck away from his body. So more in this Texas Tech game. Off and inside is the name of the game, the Big 12. Good vertical stem. Again, that manipulation. Consistently getting them to believe one thing, boom, taking it off of them. And we've seen this route before. Now, one of the interesting things is just his ability to adjust. We've seen this trajectory before, but this time the ball is not going to be on this plane where he's got the win. The ball is actually going to come inside. And so we're going to see him adjust to a ball in the air and try to get there in time. And again, this will be a good one for the end copy. So one of the hard things in an evaluation is just judging it against the quarterback play and making sure you're trying to keep a barometer that makes sense in these settings. 
Thank the camera operator. The camera operator didn't help us on that one. He took it away. Well, let's flip over and let's take a look at what this means for the Philadelphia Eagles. So I, I want to take a look at Deshaun Jackson's role in this offense and see if we couldn't see where exactly Rieger's going to get fit in. So they're going to create his opportunity for release. All right. They already have the wing set here. So we got a nice big cushion between the receiver and the line of scrimmage. You put him in motion as well. So again, creating that vertical. Now they take a lot of more outside leverage here. But look at him stem. Good job breaking out. And so these are the kind of routes that Rieger is going to have to learn how to run. Get up on the toes, manipulate, cross them, and then pluck away from your body and get your feet in bounds. Again, that's where that explosive element comes in, but also the added route running nuance, right? Deshaun Jackson and any receiver that's going to be outside lane for the Eagles is not just going to be a one-trick pony. They're going to have to understand the nuance of how to set up and manipulate people to work in the timing and the rhythm that does become a critical component of that offense. All right, so we do see some more slot here. Didn't have a, a, as much reps in the exposure. Rieger did run some from the slot last year, uh, but that's going to be one piece that we're going to have to look in terms of some of the projection. Now, he did show good coverage awareness inside, which is important. But again, just looking at that vertical, I mean, we saw this route. We saw it from the outside, but we saw this same type of route. Now, Deshaun realizes from the leverage, he doesn't have to do a lot of manipulation. There's, He was just too far outside. He just needed to get inside and win the foot race. And again, ball tracking over the shoulder. All things Rieger shown the ability to do. No problem with the arm on Wentz there. Big explosive play. But Deshaun only played in two games last year. All right, it was this Washington game in Atlanta, and then he was injured. And that was a big, a big disappointment for him. You know, they were finishing the season with guys that had started on their practice squad. So Deshaun's down below here. Apologies. Get him marked up for you. So again, off. The formation helps get him off in terms of the DB. Let me say that, say that differently. So we have the DB in an off position. And actually not seeing as much nuance at the top of these. He's just feeling that, that big cushion there and bending those things in accordingly but winning those foot races. And so when you have the kind of track speed that Rieger has, when you have that explosiveness, these things become a possibility. I believe this is our last clip here in the Atlanta game. So we're going to see him up top. DB finally getting up. Again, this is something that all the DBs have to learn how to do is work those first five yards if the defender is going to actually get into you. In this case, they work in a skate technique immediately. But again, feeling that leverage and being able to have that explosive element, you can see where Philadelphia wants this. They want a player that's going to be able to run and dictate coverage and what that's going to do to occupy safeties and open up things underneath. This safety has to be aware of one running vertical. And what that does is it opens up this window underneath so these routes can come under here and play. And if you don't, if you jump on top of that and this goes over the top, it's all a cat and mouse game. It's all a cat and mouse game to make sure that safety cannot be right in these scenarios. And so that explosive vertical element that can stay healthy throughout the season is going to be critically important to the success of the Philadelphia Eagles moving into the 2020 campaign.